Welcome to part two of my mobile automation cucumber and calabash tutorial. This portion is going to be going over the environment setup. Uh, we're going to be looking at setting up Java, Ant, ADB, um, the Android debug bridge, uh, Ruby, and Ruby's development kit. So the first thing to do is uh, download Java. It's going to open Chrome and we're going to just Google Java JDK. Click on our first link for the downloads. Right over here, we can click the JDK download, accept the license, and pick the 64 bit. Now we just got to let it download. Right, with the JDK setup um, open, we can click next. Uh, you're more than welcome to leave it at the default uh, location. I'm going to go ahead and change mine so that I can clean this up easier later. Alright, same thing with the JRE. I'm just going to go ahead and put that in that same folder that I just created. Alright, and we don't need to do next steps because that's just to look at the documentation and guides. Okay, now that we have Java installed, we need to verify that it's working properly. So what we can do is open up a command prompt, and we can go ahead and type Java. As you can see, it found Java, um, so the Java portion is properly set up. Now we need to make sure that the compiler is set up by typing in Java C. As you can see, it's not a recognized command. What we need to do is set up an environment variable for the command to be able to find this file. So to be able to do that, we just need to open up the location of where we installed our um, JDK. So go ahead and find your location, go into your JDK, open up the bin folder, click up here at the URL bar, and copy the location. As you can see, the Java C um, file is right here so now we just need to point to it so we can go ahead and just search environment on our computer and it's going to open up the system properties you can click the environment variables portion right here and we just need to append this uh, location onto our path so click the path and go ahead and hit edit uh, tab the right arrow to go all the way to the right put a semicolon and paste that location in. Hit OK, OK, and OK. Let's open up a new command prompt and see if it works. And by typing in Java C, it now recognizes it as a proper command. Alright, now with Java set up and working properly, we need to do the same for Ant. So what we're going to do is just open Google, and type in Apache Ant. Go ahead and click this link. Over here on the downloads, click the binary distributions. And we're going to go ahead and grab the zip file. Alright, now that Apache Ant is done downloading, we can go ahead and open the folder. Um, we're going to go ahead and extract this. And you can pick any location you want. I'm not going to leave it in downloads. I'm going to actually put it in the same position as uh, the folder I made. So I'm just going to create a folder called Ant. And I'm going to extract it here. Alright, now that Ant is done, we need to verify. We can open a command prompt and type in Ant. As you can see, just like the Java, it's not recognized as a command. So what we need to do is set that up as an environment variable as well. 
we're going to just go into the ant location, go into the bin folder, and do the same thing. Copy the link. Edit our environment variables. And go ahead and append this on to the end as well with a semicolon and by pasting in the location to the bin. Clicking OK. Keeping in mind you gotta open a new command prompt for your environment variables to take place. As you can see, it's no longer saying it's not a recognized command and it's okay, it says build fail because we actually didn't uh, give it any file. So that's fine. As you can see, ant is working. Now that ant is set up and working, we need to set up the Android SDK and uh, make sure ADB works. So what we're going to do is open Google, type in Android SDK install. We're going to go ahead and pick the first link. And now you have the option of choosing between Android Studio and the standalone tools. Um, I'm going to go with the standalone tools because uh, we're not doing any development work and we don't need all the added weight of the Android Studio. And in the IDE setup, we are actually going to integrate the SDK tools into the IDE we're using, Eclipse. So go ahead, click the SDK tools, and go ahead and click download the SDK now. And we're going to pick the Windows installer. Agree to the terms, and download. Now that we have finished downloading the Android SDK, we can go ahead and click the executable. Navigate through. Right here it's looking to see if we have Java set up, and we do. Can install this for anyone on my computer. And you're more than welcome, as before noted, to leave it at the default location. I'm going to move it so I can clean it up easier later. Putting in my same file. All right, now that Android SDK is finished installing, we can go ahead and click the next button. And we're going to start the SDK manager because this allows us to download system images, which we're going to need. So this is a nifty tool where you can pick out all different kind of um, tools that you want, such as like the Android 6.0, 5.1, all the different operating systems. So first things first, we just need to, I'm going to grab the 6.0 emulators along with um, all of the build tools. And click install, accept the license, and install. You're more than welcome to um, download all the different uh, system images you want to run your emulators on but to keep this video short and not have to wait a long time to download all the system images I'm just going to download one for the time being. Okay now that the system image and build tools have been downloaded we can go ahead and close out the prompt and we can close out of the SDK manager as well. Now we can open up a command prompt, type in ADB. As you can see, it's not recognized. So just as before, we need to set it up as an environment variable. So all we got to do is go into the folder we created, go into the Android SDK, and we can navigate into the platform tools that we have recently downloaded. And as you can see, here's the file called ADB. So all we gotta do is click the URL bar, copy the location, and add it into our environment variables as we've done before. Edit the path and paste in the platform tools. 
Now when we open a new command prompt, type in ADB, the command is recognized. So we have our SDK installed and ADB is set up. ADB will allow us to do all of our interacting between our computer and either a simulator or a physical device. Okay, now that we have ADB set up, we need to make the Android SDK an environment variable as well. So we can go into our Android SDK folder, copy the location, type in environment, hit environment variables, and we're going to click new this time. And we're going to call this one Android underscore home. We're going to paste in our location. Okay, now that we have ADB and the Android SDK set up properly, we're going to move on to setting up Ruby. So all we got to do is open Chrome, and we can just type in Ruby install. And we're going to go to the Ruby installer website, click on downloads. I'm going to pick the uh, 2.1 64-bit because that is the one that I am the most familiar with. Alright, now that the file is done or downloading, we can go ahead and click the executable. Okay, I'm not sure why I didn't open up. We're going to do it again. Alright, and we're going to pick English, accept the license, and we also want to add Ruby executables to our path so we don't actually have to manually add it. And we also want to check this one to associate the Ruby files um, with the Ruby installation. And you can leave this location if you'd like. I'm going to change it so I can clean it up when I'm done. All right. we can open up a command prompt and verify that ruby-v for the version lists that we have ruby installed alright now that we have ruby set up and installed we need to get the development kit so if you scroll down on the same page we were already at you can see that there's these development kits and we're using the 64-bit for ruby 2.0 or above so we're going to download this one. Okay, now that the development kit has been installed or downloaded, we can click the executable, run the file, and I'm going to change the extraction location. I'm going to make a file called rubydk for the development kit, and that is where I'm going to extract these files. Okay, now that we've extracted the development kit to our location, we need to go find it. And it is right in here. So what we need to do is actually click on this URL bar, and if you type in CMD and hit enter, it actually opens a command prompt for the location at which you were in. So it's important to note that we need to be in the development kit um, file where we extracted out those files and we need to type in ruby dk.rb in it and then the same thing but install alright and that has set up the ruby uh, development kit
All right, and then now that we've got all of our tools set up and installed and properly working, that concludes this uh, portion of the series. Thank you for watching, and we will be going over our IDE setup in the next video, and then maybe getting into making the structure of the Calabash Cucumber framework. All right, see you soon.